All right, geometry, all you video lovers, we are going to end up doing this video after all on Tuesday night, so that way on Wednesday we have just a normal work day. What we're going to do is we're going to do section 5.4 today, talking about using medians and altitudes, okay? So let's just jump right in. A lot more vocabulary that we're going to add to chapter 5. Again, please prepare for your vocabulary test that you will have on Thursday of this week, okay? A median is a segment from a midpoint to a vertex of the triangle, okay? A little complicated at first if you're just kind of listening to the surface, okay? The median is a segment from the midpoint, okay? So if this is the midpoint, if G is the midpoint of AD, it is a segment from the midpoint of the uh, midpoint to a vertex. So from here to C, right? So this is a median. G to C is a median. F, if F is the midpoint of DC, it's from F to A, right? Here's the midpoint all the way to your vertex A. Same thing here. If B is the midpoint of AC, here's the midpoint, here's your segment all the way to vertex D. Okay, let's look at the lengths here. Segment AB is seven centimeters. BC is seven centimeters. That makes sense, right? Because that is the midpoint, so therefore this is these are equal. Now let's look at these. AE is 7.4 centimeters. And EF is 3.7 centimeters. Okay? Pop that into your calculator and figure out what the difference there is. Okay? That's right. AE is two times the length of EF. Okay? Let's look at CE. 7.8. And EG. 3.9. Again, CE is two times the length of EG. Alright. Let's move these all back out of here so we can take a look here. Let's get a little more vocabulary in. And we're going to talk more about that whole comparison in a second. Uh, one of the new vocabulary words for this unit is the centroid. That's the point of concurrency. Again, that point of concurrency is where three lines intersect. This is the point of concurrency of the medians. Okay? So here is a median. It's a line there. It goes from here to here. Here's your median. Midpoint to vertex, here to here, that's one. Midpoint to vertex, there's one. So there's your three lines intersect right there at point E. So point E is your centroid. Okay, it's where all the medians intersect. Now the reason I asked you a second ago to look at the comparison of EG and CE and AE and EF is I wanted to talk about the ratio of the centroid to the vertex. Okay? or the, uh, compared to the ratio of the centroid to the midpoint, okay? So, it's two to one, right? Because you said that this length, AE, was two times, so AE, 7.4, was two times as long as, whoops, EF, which is 3.7, right? So, from the centroid to the vertex, it's twice as long as from the centroid to the actual midpoint. So two to one. Another way you can look at this ratio is two thirds to one third. And, and you'll see that, you'll understand more of that in here in just a second. And part of that is because what you're going to see is if you take this, this centroid, I'm sorry, this median, and you break it into three parts. So let's say this is nine. This EAF is a 9, okay? If this is 9, that means this is going to be 2 of the thirds to the 1 third. So 2 of these would be 6, and this would be 3, right? So that's how you get that 2 thirds to 1 third. The big thing to remember, though, is the 2 to 1. 2 to 1. All right, let's keep going. So if we're looking here, and we know that KS is 3 centimeters... What is KR? That's right. It's KR is twice as long as KS. So 2 times 3 is 6. KR is 6. 
If you know LK, LK is 8. What is KM? Well, you know it's 2 of the third, right? So if this is 8, it's half the size of this. I'm sorry, KM is half the size of LK. So KM would be 8 divided by 2 is 4. Okay. Sorry about that. So we said KR was 6. And the whole segment, SR, is 9, right? 3 plus 6 is 9. Over here, we said KM was 4. LK was 8. And the whole segment LM is 12. What if I was to give you that IK is equal to 6? If I told you that IK was equal to 6, how would you figure out each segment length? This is where this 2 thirds to 1 third comes in. I'm sorry, IK, I meant IH. If IH is 6, this is where that 2 thirds to 1 third comes in. If IH is 6, we need to break that down into 3, right? So IH divided, so it's 6, divided by 3 is 2. So what that means, I'm going to have two twos in here, which is going to give me four, and one two here, which is going to give me two. So I'm going to have a segment of four and two. Does that still work? Is that still two times the size of this one? Yeah, absolutely. So HK is two, and KI is four. And again, that was if I was given six right away. That's kind of how you break that. If you don't have it, if you just have one large segment, so like 9. If I'm given SR as 9, but I don't know what uh, SK is or KR, then what I have to do is say, okay, I have 9. Let's break it into 3s. So 9 divided by 3 is 3. So anytime I do that, the answer is going to be the small segment. And then 2 times the answer is going to be the big segment. And that's pretty much it for that one. All right, let's look at the altitude. These are all special segments that we're dealing with here, and the altitude is no different. It's a special segment. It's a perpendicular segment to a vertex, okay? What do you think the altitude does for you? Think about the word altitude and where you know that word to be from. Yeah, when I think of altitude, I think of, of height, you know, altitude on a mountain or the altitude in a plane, those kind of things. So the altitude is going to give us the height of our triangle. How many altitudes can we have? If we're going from a perpendicular segment to a vertex, how many altitudes do you think you can have? Yeah, you can have three altitudes because you're going to have three different vertex. So here's a vertex, perpendicular segment to this line here. Here's a, seg here's a vertex, perpendicular segment to this line here. Here's a vertex, perpendicular segment to this line here. That's three different altitudes. And notice on these altitudes, they're not bisectors. Okay? This line from here to here is 90 degrees. That creates a 90 degree angle, a perpendicular, but it does not make these two segments bisecting or congruent. So it's not a perpendicular bisector. It's a little bit different than a perpendicular bisector. Okay? Your orthocenter is the altitude point of concurrency. Okay, that's where all of your altitudes meet. So this point right there would be your orthocenter. It's like your circumcenter, it's like your end center, it's like what we just talked about up here, your centroid, and now your orthocenter is the one that goes with your altitudes where all the altitude segments meet to one point. Okay? Let's take a look at this diagram here. Let's, let's identify each one of these things. Okay? Where is your altitude? Since we we're talking about that, where is your altitude? Which one of these segments represents an altitude? Yeah. AF. 
AF is an altitude. I know this because it's coming from the vertex to the side of the triangle, and it has a perpendicular segment. So that's my altitude. AF represents an altitude. Okay, what about an angle bisector? Yeah, right here. This is an angle bisector right here. You know this because you have two angles being bisected. BD is the angle bisector because it's got two congruent sides on this side. That's your angle bisector. Okay. What about a perpendicular bisector? Which one's a perpendicular bisector? How about EZ here? EZ bisects BA into two congruent segments, and there's your 90 degree angle. And then last but not least, what about a median? Which one of these is a median? Yeah, here's the midpoint. We know E is the midpoint of this segment here because you have AE is congruent to BE. Well, E goes to C, so EC is your median because it's from the midpoint to the vertex, so that's your median. So just to kind of recap everything that we've learned so far in Chapter 5 is you have your perpendicular bisector. That's a perpendicular at a midpoint. Those are associated, the point of concurrency is called the circumcenter. You have your angle bisector. That bisects an angle to a side, right? So from the side of a triangle to an angle, and these are the pictures. So here, from the side of the triangle to the vertex, bisects this angle. The point of concurrency associated with an angle bisector is the end center. Learn that today in class. Then you have your median, which is the midpoint to a vertex, and the, the point of concurrency for medians are centroids. And then today you learned also the altitude, which is a vertex to the side with a perpendicular segment right here. And the point of concurrency for altitude is the orthocenter. So you got to be able to identify all of these different things and be able to use all of these four different types of special segments that we've learned so far in chapter 5. And that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, please feel free to write them down. I actually don't feel free. Please just do it. Write them down. Bring them into tutoring, and we will go over them with whatever you need. Okay? That's it. Have a great night, and good luck to the basketball team tonight.